How are you doing here? Jeff Smith's Garage. What we talk about today is swapping distributors. It's a, often a common problem where maybe you've got an engine that didn't have a distributor in it and you don't know how to put it in right, or you've pulled it out and you've moved the engine and now you're not sure where to go. So what we're going to talk about is how to do that, and it's a very simple process. It's literally foolproof, and it won't take but a couple minutes to walk through this whole process. So you've probably noticed we've turned this engine around. So and you'll also notice a little clean, clean rag here in the distributor hole. Uh, I always stick a clean rag in the hole because nasty stuff falls down inside there when you leave it open. It's just, it's an invitation for disaster. So just a word of the wise. So we've, uh, what we're gonna do now is we wanna position the engine so that we know where to put the distributor in. So the first thing we're gonna do is crank the engine over clockwise. You saw the finger over the hole, over the, over the number one spark plug, which on a small block Chevy is on the left front, driver's side front. Um, on the Fords, it's on the opposite side. But um, uh, we're gonna turn the engine over to you here, the pressure come up, and then what I like to do is set the timing at roughly 12 degrees before top dead center. That's, that's a, it's a nice safe place to put it. Uh, 12 degrees before, which means it's the, the mark is coming up to your mark, it's turning clockwise. I had a friend of mine set timing one time on an engine, told me he had it set right, but was complaining it wasn't running right, it was running hot and just lazy. And he brought it over here and he had it set at 12 degrees before top dead center. So the problem was he set it after top dead center, not before. The tab on his particular engine had an A on for uh, after. That's what GM meant it to mean. And he interpreted that to mean advanced. So, but if you just look at it, if you can see this rotating, and if zero is here and you're rotating, you're moving into it that means that you're advanced. So we're set the timing at 12 degrees before top dead center. Now we have the engine configured where we want it. Now we'll drop the distributor in. So on small and big block Chevys, this is an oil pump. Um, and it, the oil pump is driven off of the distributor gear, which is this gear is driven off of the camshaft gear that's in the engine. So as you can see, there's a female tang on this drive shaft. And what it does, it fits down inside a male tang and the distributor, and now they're all driven together. But in order to drop the distributor in, most of the time, the distributor will not drop all the way down and be flush with this intake manifold flange because the, the, the tang is not engaged, and we'll show you how to do that. Okay, we've dropped the distributor in and we position the cap. The cap can only go on one way, generally, almost all HEIs. The vacuum advanced canister is over here, and your terminals are all mounted over here. The cap will only go on one way. General Motors generally puts number one right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark the body of the distributor right there and this terminal to identify for number one. Now what you're gonna see, you pull the cap off, rotor's not pointing to number one. Now we can pull this way over like that, but generally most you know, something of a purist, but this is where General Motors puts their vacuum advanced canister. That way you have plenty of room to move to adjust the timing. So a rotor's in the wrong place. So we have to pull this back out and reposition it. The mark for our number one terminal is here, but you can see the rotor's in the wrong spot. So we need to do, now you'll notice as we pull the distributor out, notice how it backs up, it goes counterclockwise. That's because of the helical shape of the gear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reposition the gear and drop it back in. Now the distributor hasn't dropped in all the way, but now we're fully engaged with the teeth and now it lines up. So now we've got the distributor dropped in, but you can see it's not fully engaged because the tangs are not aligned. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the engine over and at the same time push down slightly on the distributor to give some downward pressure to make sure it drops in place, just like that. Okay, now we've, we've set the, the crankshaft at 12 degrees back again. We want to double check to make sure our rotor's in the right place to make sure we did it right. And you can see that it's off, but that's a simple process now. We're just moving the body of the distributor until it lines up with the rotor. Now we're ready to put the cap on. Now the distributor's dropped into place. We've got to make sure and put the clamp on. So we'll put our... We use a stud and a nut rather than a bolt because it's easier. And then once you have it on, then you can also use, sometimes getting it with a straight 9 16 wrench is kind of tough. Get a little distributor wrench like this that will help you tighten it down. But we're not ready to tighten it just yet. 
Okay, so we've got the distributor in, the cap is on. We've actually marked the top of our wires for the firing order, plugged the wires on the distributor cap. We've got the, the, the cap plugged in to the triggers for the deal. So all that's left now to do basically is fire the engine back up. Now, we've initially set this at roughly 12 degrees, but when we're eyeballing the rotor to the, the cap, we're really not exactly sure. So the hot ticket would be to use a timing light, fire the engine back up. It should fire right up because it's close. Then you can verify your timing. If the timing is not exactly where you want it to be, let's say you want it at 15, just loosen the, the, the bolt up a little bit, slightly turn it a little bit, adjust it until you get the timing, the initial timing where you want it, cinch it back down, and you're ready to go. It's that simple.